Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends welcome to the lecture series of bsc with chemistry physical chemistry paper 4 this is lecture 5 of module 1 in our previous lecture we have discussed the migration of ions and the, and the determination of transport number using hitops method in this lecture we will continue with the determination of transport number using moving boundary method the moving boundary method is another method for determination of transport number in this method particularly the experimental arrangement is as shown here in the figure in this particular arrangement the glass tube fitted with two platinum electrodes are used you can see here these are the two platinum electrodes now if i want to find out the transport number of cation a plus and if i consider the electrolyte for this as ax and the another electrolyte bx is selected and specially such electrolyte is selected wherein the anion is common in both the electrolytes ax and bx now in this particular experiment experiment setup what we will do we will fill this glass tube with bx first and then ax is added very slowly to this particular tube now while adding care must be taken that it should not create the turbulence and a sharp boundary is formed at the junction of bx so one has to take utmost care while filling the ax in this particular tube now we can take uh, any two electrolytes say for example uh, in order to determine the transport number of uh, potassium ion i take the kcl potassium chloride and lithium chloride uh basically which has chlori uh, chloride ions as common anion and particularly this lithium ion has got lower speed than that of the potassium ion a silver or copper voltmeter or simple ammeter is placed in series with the tube now this is placed in order to determine the total electricity passed through the cell once this arrangement is done a steady state current or a steady current is passed through the solution and this current is passed through the solution say for about 5 to 6 hours and we will now watch for the shift in the boundary from say this level to this level okay now this transition one has to record so let the boundary moves from b1 to b2 through the distance l okay and once we record this distance or once we record the transfer from b1 to b2 layer with the calculations we can do in this manner so let the distance of movement of boundary is l meters area of cross section is say suppose a meter square the tube whatever tube we had taken volume of electrolyte swept It it must be given by L into A meter cube. Obviously, let the concentration of solution is C grams gram equivalent per meter cube. The amount of electrolyte in volume it will be L into A, which is equal to L into A into C gram equivalents. Now, one gram equivalent electrolyte requires ninety six thousand five hundred coulombs of electricity. We know. so the total electricity required for l into a into c gram equivalent will be l into a into c into f coulombs that is faraday constant f is a faraday faraday constant and therefore if i want to find out the transport number how can i find out the transport number say let the amount of electricity flowing through the ammeter is q and therefore transport number will be given by will be given by the total amount of electricity required in coulombs divided by the divided by the amount of electricity flowing through the ammeter so l into a into c into f upon q 
So this equation 34 will give us the transport number value. Also, if I ampere of current passes through the emitter for say t seconds, we have got this charge Q is equal to I into T. If I substitute this value of value of electricity Q here in denominator, I get this transport number that is T plus for cation is equal to L into A into C into F upon I into T. Okay. Further, if the silver or copper voltmeter is used in place of the emitter and say 1 Faraday that is 96,500 Coulomb electricity is passed through it, then the equivalent weight Z gram of silver or copper is deposited. So let W is the weight of silver or copper deposited if I assume, then Z gram will imply that is 1 Faraday. Okay. And therefore, this W gram will imply W upon Z Faraday. And therefore, my transport number will be L into A into C into Z upon W. So, this way I can calculate the transport number using moving boundary method. Although this experiment looks very simple, but then it has, uh, it requires the lot of experimental skills to be while performing uh, the experiment while adding the solution, while keeping the current, uh, steady current flowing through the system five, for five to six hours is a tedious job and one requires a special skill to observe the transfer of layer from say B1 to B2. And this transfer, the, the more perfect you are, more per perfect results you will get. Okay. So this is another method for finding out the transport number uh, using the moving boundary method. Let us, let us, let us see the factors affecting transport number. Now, these are the factors which affects the transport number. We have pointed out one by one, the size of ions. Now, how does size of ions affect? The smaller is the size of ions, higher is the velocity and therefore higher is the transport number. Okay. The second point is hydration. How does hydration relates to the transport number? Higher is the hydration, larger is the effective size and smaller is the transport number okay so that is that gives you the reason for smaller transport number third part is concentration as the concentration increases there is extremely small change in transport number that means it does not affect uh, the transport number to a great extent however if the change in concentration changes composition by association dissociation or complex formation there is a large change in transport number so the composition change by association, dissociation or complex, complex formation may alter the transport number to a greater extent. Then the next part is counter ion. Transport number of speed of ion to the sum of speeds of both ions that is u upon u plus v is the formula. Hence the transport number of any ion is affected by change in speed of opposite ion. That is quite obvious. And the last factor is temperature. So as the temperature increases, the transport number of both cation and anion approaches equal value that is 0 0.5. Hence, if transport number of ion is greater than 0.5, it goes on decreasing with the increase in temperature. So, if transport number of ion is smaller than 0 0.5, it goes on increasing with the increase in temperature. So, these are the factors which affects the transport number. Let us see one or two numerical based on uh, whatever we have seen just now. Okay. In this example, what is given? Let us see. A solution of silver nitrate was electrolyzed between silver electrodes. Before electrolysis, 10 gram of solution contained 0.01788 grams of silver nitrate. After experiment, 20.09 gram of anodic solution contained 0.06227 grams of silver nitrate. At the same time, 0.009479 grams of copper was deposited in copper coulometer placed in the series. Calculate the transport number of silver ion and nitrate ions. We have been provided with the information of atomic weight of silver is 108 and copper is 63.6. Okay, so this is particularly uh, the uh, numerical which is based on the heat offs method. So we need to find out what the transport number. So we'll proceed accordingly. So in solution, what do we first consider? We will first see what is given. So after electrolysis, 20 gram of solution will imply 
what does it imply it implies 0.06227 grams of silver nitrate isn't it which is given and therefore the weight of water is 20 minus 0.06227 so it, it is the weight of water that is 20.02773 okay before electrolysis 10 gram of solution contains 0.01788 grams of silver nitrate okay and therefore weight of water is 10 minus 0.01788 and therefore it is 9.98212 grams and therefore 20.02773 grams of water is associated with 1 into 0 1 1.01788 into 20.02773 upon 9.98212 which is equal to 0 0.03587 grams of silver nitrate isn't it so we have now got the how much amount uh, uh, i mean uh, the 20.02773 grams of water is associated with this much grams of silver nitrate. Now, increase in weight of silver nitrate will be given by this that is the 0 0.06227 minus 0 0.03587. This difference will give, give us the increase in silver nitrate. So, 0 0.0264 grams increase will be there. Now, therefore, increase in weight of silver will be uh, find out like, uh, using this formula. That is this weight 0 0.0264 into its atomic weight upon 170. So this is equal to 0 0.01677 gram equivalent. And let, let us call this as Y. Isn't it? We have seen this while solving the uh, numerical based on Hitov's method. We have seen the Hitov method and its calculation. So the total increase in weight of silver if no silver ion would have been migrated. So it can be obtained from the weight of copper deposited in the voltmeter. The weight of copper can be converted into equivalent weight of silver as this. So weight of silver upon weight of copper is equal to equivalent weight of silver upon equivalent weight of copper, which gives the weight of silver is equal to 108 upon 31.8 into 0.09479. So which is nothing but 0.03219 grams of uh, grams of silver. Okay. So, uh, this quantity is nothing but X. So, we have got now increase in weight that is Y and this uh, weight as X. So, my transport number is nothing but X minus Y upon X. This we have already seen while we, we have seen the method of Hitox method. So, this transport number of silver cation as silver ion is nothing but X minus Y upon X. So, if we substitute the value of X value of Y from here. And divided by value of x so i get the transport number as 0 0.4790 likewise the transport number for nitrate ion it is 1 minus t plus that is 1 minus transport number of cations so 1 minus 0. Uh, 0 0.4790 it, it will give me 0 0.5201 okay so this way i can find out the um, transport number of nitrate ion and transport number of silver ion okay let us see another numerical. In this numerical, what is given? In an experiment of electrolysis of copper sulfate between copper electrodes, the total mass of copper deposited at the cathode was 0 0.153 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg. The masses of copper per unit volume of anode liquid before and after electrolysis were 0 0.79 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg and 0 0.91 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg respectively. Calculate the transport numbers of copper ion and sulphate ion. Once again, we will have to find out, we, we know the transport number definition or the transport number formula. That is, we need to calculate X and we need to calculate Y. So, uh, we need to, uh, our task is now to find out if the increase in weight of copper, uh, we, will, we will find out. And then the increase in copper, uh, how much it would migrate, the, that quantity will give us X. So what we have, we have mass of copper per unit volume before electrolysis is 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg. And mass of copper per unit volume after electrolysis is this much, 0.91 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg. So the increase in weight of copper is, will be given by Y. So Y is equal to 0 0.12 into 10 to the power minus, minus 3 kg. So the total increasing number of copper ions would have migrated x that quantity will be x so that is equal to 0 0.153 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg so if i substitute these values in formula of transport number of copper plus 
copper 2 plus a is nothing but x minus y upon x again if i substitute the values i get the transport number of copper ion is 0.215 once i get the copper uh, transport number of copper ion i can very easily find out the transport number of sulfate ion that is 1 minus the transport number of copper ion is which is equal to 1 minus 0.215 which is equal to 0.785 isn't it very similarly i can find out uh, i can go for the another numerical and i can uh, find out the transport number using moving boundary method so we will take one numerical for from moving boundary method in moving boundary method using a tube with cross sectional area that is a that is 1.24 cm square now 0.1 normal hcl was used to determine the transport number of h plus and cl minus ion the boundary moved through the distance of 7.5 cm this is given the amount of current was determined by recording the weight of silver deposited in silver voltmeter in series which was 0.1209 gram calculate the transport number of h plus and cl minus i so all the information required is given so we have been provided with the length the layer has traveled that is l is equal to 7.5 cm that is 0.075 meters area of cross section for the tube is given that is 1.24 cm square that is 0.0124 m square weight of um, uh, this uh, silver deposited in silver voltmeter is given 0.1209 grams so z is equal to 0.108 so c is equal to 0.1 concentration n is equal to 0.1 gram equivalent per decimeter cube which is equal to 0.1 into 10 to the power 3 gram equivalent um, uh, per meter cube now if i substitute this value in this transport number formula that is l into a into c into z upon w so after substituting this value what i get what i get i get this transport number of hydrogen ion is 0.8308 and since i can find out the transport number of hydrogen ion using the transport number of hydrogen ion i can calculate the transport number of chloride ions that is 1 minus transport number of hydrogen ion which is nothing but 0.1692 so this way i can find out the transport number using the moving boundary uh, experiment okay this is what just we just now we have seen in the method of moving boundary okay another numerical which is interesting uh, which is based on uh, the moving boundary experiment in a moving boundary experiment using 0.02 molar kcl the boundary moved by 38.7 mm in 20 minutes when a steady current of 1.82 into 10 to the power minus 3 ampere was passed the tube has a bore of 4.146 mm calculate transport numbers of k plus and cl minus cl minus ions so we can very easily calculate because we have seen moving motor method just now and all the formulas we know so uh, first thing is we have to convert it into all si units so concentration 0.02 molar that is 0.02 gram equivalent per decimeter cube that is nothing but 0.02 into 10 to the power 3 gram equivalent per meter cube for kcl the, uh, the molecular weight is equal to equivalent weight and therefore uh, we could convert it so l is equal to 30, the length which I, it has traveled is l is equal to 38.7 mm that is nothing but 38.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters the area of cross section uh, the diameter is given 4.146 mm that is 4.146 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters now so area i can uh, calculate since diameter is given so area is equal to pi r square so pi into d by 2 square so I substitute i can calculate the area that is 13.49 uh, into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square so area of cross section is this much the current is passed is this much for time 20 minutes that is 1200 seconds and therefore my transport number for potassium ion is nothing but l into a into c into f upon i into t so if i substitute all the values which i have now i get the transport number of potassium ion as 0 0.461 and therefore the uh, transport number of chloride ion can be given by 1 minus 0 the transport number of potassium ion that therefore it the transport number of chloride ions comes out to be 0 0.539 let us now see the Kohlrausch law of independent migration of ions. This we have seen in our earlier lecture. So now as seen earlier, say for strong electrolyte, the value of molar conductance in a very dilute solution 
so uh, when i say dilute solution how much dilute it is say 0.001 or 0.0001 molar solution so it is it is very close to limiting value of conductivity at infinite dilution now it is in case of strong electrolyte on the other hand the corresponding value if i consider for weak electrolyte it is far far away from the limiting value at zero concentration say for example as we have already uh, seen that at around 25 degrees of centigrade say for 0.001 molar sodium chloride solution molar conductivity is around 123.7 cm cm2 per mole as against the conductance at infinite dilution of 126.5 cm cm2 per mole so the, no not much difference uh, is there in case of strong electrolyte like nacl at the same time when i see at same concentration and same temperature the value of acetic acid it this value find uh, the molar conductance at infinite dilution is around 49.2 cm cm2 per mole as compared to that of 390.7 cm cm2 per mole so in case of weak electrolyte there is a huge difference so kolrash was first to observe that when molar conductance for a uni univalent strong electrolyte is plotted against the square root of concentration the curve approaches uh, like a linear value or it approach uh, very varies linearly in dilute solution and it follows the equation of straight line like this where this b is the constant and the value of uh, limiting molar value or limiting molar conductance it can be obtained by extrapolating the curve so if i extrapolate uh, this curve of uh, molar conductance against the uh, square root of c so the intercept will give me this molar conductance at infinite dilution now this extrapolation uh, it cannot be applied in case of weak, weak electrolyte so it is quite obvious why we cannot apply because the variation of molar conductance with the dilute solution or uh, as we go on diluting the weak electrolyte the variation is so rapid that uh, initial at initial level it does not follow linearity or it it gives you the curvature nature like this and at higher concentration then it follows the linear path whereas at initial level at very low dilution it follows a sharp drop kind of uh, nature so in such cases for determining the limiting molar conductance of weak electrolyte the kolrash law of independent migration of ion can be employed and this law particularly states that the equivalent conductance conductance of any electrolyte at infinite dilution is the sum of equivalent conductance of cation and anion at infinite dilution now why does kolrash uh, uh, has stated like this in order to understand this what he has said actually at infinite dilution where all dissociation for all electrolytes is complete so electrolyte is completely dissociated and where all inter ionic effects disappear each ion migrates independently of its co ion and contributes to the total molar molar conductivity of the electrolyte uh, Uh, and it will contribute in such a way that it will give a definite share uh, of its conductance which depends only on its own nature and not at all on the ion with which it is associated that means it is independent when it is dissociated that means on the basis of these observation kolrash concluded that each ion makes a definite contribution to the total conductance of the electrolyte at infinite dilution which is independent of the other ions present if i want to mathematically represent that it should be given by this equation number 9 that is the molar conductance at infinite dilution is equal to sum of this molar conductance by cation plus molar conductance of by anion in fact the studied uh, what kolrash has studied he studied the molar conductivities at infinite dilution of various pairs of strong electrolyte containing common ions you can see in this table like kcl nacl kbr nabr kno3 nno3 and here also kcl kbr nacl nabr lical libr okay so he observed that the difference between conductances of pairs of electrolytes are equal as shown here 
so look at look at these their differences kcl nacl where cl is common so difference is this kbr nabr bromine is common look at the difference kno3 no3 and no3 look at the difference the kcl kbr look at the difference nacl nabr look at the difference lacl libr look at the difference so these differences are common and therefore kolrash uh, concluded that each ion makes a definite contribution to the total conductance of electrolyte at infinite dilution which is independent of the other ions present isn't it and therefore the this kolrash law of independent migration of ion is that way very important now we can this this law is particularly very important and there are lot many applications of this kolrash law uh of independent migration of ions and we will see all the applications of these uh, ions uh hereafter one by one now let us see the applications of cold rush law we have already stated earlier that the equivalent conductance goes on increasing on dilution and this increase is almost linear with respect to square root of c in case of strong electrolyte okay it varies linearly so in this case of strong electrolyte the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution can be straight away obtained by extrapolation of the graph however in case of weak electrolyte it is not that simple in case of weak electrolyte this increase is not linear and therefore it cannot be determined by simple extrapolation and therefore it can be obtained indirectly from the cold rush law it can be done in two ways so one of the way is for from transport number we can obtain it okay for this two two strong electrolytes containing cation and anion of the weak electrolyte are taken A, any two strong electrolytes say for example uh, in order to calculate the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of weak electrolyte of ammonium hydroxide two strong electrolytes like ammonium chloride and naoh are to be selected so since these two are the strong electrolytes i can very easily find out uh, the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution for naoh and for nh4cl how can i do how can i do it i can dissolve it in uh, the solution and I, if i take their solution these nh4cl being strong electrolyte and naoh being strong electrolyte they can dissociate completely and therefore i can plot the graph of uh, equivalent conductance against the square root of concentration and then i can extrapolate the graph uh, against the square root of concentration and the intercept will is going to give me the infinite dil uh, the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution for nh4cl and NA, uh, NA, naoh now these values can be used to calculate uh, the um, equivalent conductance of cation and anion individually okay so now say my, my equivalent conductance for ammonium ion is nothing but the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution for nh4cl into transport number of ammonium ion and similarly in the case of naoh is that that is the equivalent conductance of hydroxide ion is equal to the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of hydroxide ion into transport number of hydroxide ion so now my kolrash kolrash law say that this equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of nh4oh is nothing but the equivalent conductance of ammonium ion into equivalent conductance of hydroxide ion and this way if i substitute these values using the transport numbers i can very easily calculate the equivalent conductance of ammonium hydroxide at, at infinite dilution this is one way by in which i can utilize the uh, method of transport number that means if i know the transport number i can very easily calculate the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution for the weak electrolyte this is one of the method the another method is three electrolyte method in this particular method for example uh, i need to determine the uh, equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of weak electrolyte say acetic acid so for determining this i need to select the three strong electrolytes like sodium acetate nacl and hcl if suppose i select these three strong electrolytes and if i want to find out now the equivalent conductance so their equivalent conductances can be determined as, again by the known method that i can prepare the solution and i can note down their conductances equivalent conductance uh, i can calculate their equivalent conductance from the experiment and i can plot their values against the square root of c and the intercept value will give me the equivalent conductances at infinite dilution say for example now if i want to uh, find out the equivalent conductance of uh, sodium acetate i can split up like this 
acetate and sodium ion hcl also i can write down like this nacl also i can write down like this and therefore my, my equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of sodium acetate plus equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of hcl minus equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of nacl if i split these terms i can write down like this so acetate ion plus sodium ion uh, hydrogen ion plus chlorine ion minus sodium ions plus chlorine ion so if i see this this sodium ion equivalent conductance and sodium ion equivalent conductance will go off likewise this chlorine ions with they will go off what remains is this equivalent conductance of acetate ion and equivalent conductance of uh, uh, hydrogen ion so it is going to give me the equivalent conductance of acetic acid so if i know if i know the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of sodium acetate uh, plus uh, hcl and minus nacl if i substitute their values in this formula i can calculate the equivalent conductance of acetic acid at infinite dilution so this way i can actually utilize the cold rush law for determining the equivalent conductance uh, of at infinite dilution for weak electrolyte okay i can utilize this uh, cold rush law for many other purposes we will see all other applications in the subsequent lecture so friends we will stop here in this stop here in this lecture 5 and we will continue in our next lecture with the other applications of cold rush law thank you